So today we're going to discuss something that when I first started shooting precision rifle, I was very confused about and didn't really understand, and that is stocks or chassis. <clears throat> There's a lot of pluses and minuses to both systems, a lot of reasons you may choose one over the other depending on what type of shooting you plan to do, and um, a lot of cost variations. That's what we're going to discuss today. <clears throat> we'll start with stocks. So stocks have been around since basically the advent of the firearm. Um, they needed something to put a barrel and an action in and put it to your shoulder and fire it, so along came the stock. Um, since then, the stocks have had a long time to be continually improved upon and perfected and to what they are today. Um, we started adding optics and scopes to our, stock, or to our rifles, so we started building up cheat combs above shooting just iron sights. Um, they started giving us much more ergonomic length of pull adjustments and giving us much more ergonomic grips. Um, so because of all that, a stock is now a very good option for building a, being able to build a solid position from the ground or a bench. Um, I personally, in my, in my personal opinion, I actually, the type of shooting that I do and the type of long range precision competitions that I prefer to compete in, which is F class style competitions or belly bench rest, I actually prefer a stock. I find it much more comfortable to get behind a stock and build a solid position and keep that position steadily um, through for a 20 shot string than I do in a chassis. Um, if you pay attention to most of my precision video or precision rifle long range shooting videos that I do, you'll see that I am shooting primarily from the prone and the stock is a much more ergonomic fit to a prone shooter or or a bench shooter. Um, if you follow F-class style shooting, um, you will notice that if you get on the line at an F-class competition, you look down the line and 90% or more of the rifles on the line are going to be in some sort of precision stock um, or it's the same with uh, bench rest shooting. And the reason for that is, is stocks are a much more ergonomic fit for that type of shooting through long strings. A chassis, on the other hand, most uh, most chassis take a lot of ergonomics from the AR-15. In fact, a lot of the chassis companies that you that you find today um, use a lot of AR-15 parts to build them out. This is an MDT LSS chassis, and it, you'll see this is an AR-15 Ho grip. This is an AR-15 Precision AR butt, butt stock. This is the Luth AR stock. It's on an A2 buffer tube, which attaches to the chassis. Um, a lot of the chassis that you see with four ends that surround the entire barrel are using AR-15 four ends. So they take a lot of ergonomics and a lot of parts from the AR-15. So if you are an AR-15 shooter or very familiar with an AR, um, and feel comfortable behind an AR, you may want to pick a chassis as your primary um, to build out your precision rifle with or to choose a factory precision rifle. Um, if you follow PRS competition, you will notice that in PRS competition um, or NRL style competition, most of the rifles that people are shooting in those competitions are are most of those rifles are in precision chassis. Um, the reason for that is is that a chassis is much more modular, is much more adaptable to different types of shooting, not just prone shooting or bench shooting. Um, it's easier to attach things to for to build stable positions um, across many different types of platforms that you may shoot off of in a PRS competition. So if you plan to build out a rifle or buy a uh, precision factory rifle, you may want to, if, and you plan to shoot PRS or NRL or practice with different types of positions, you may want to go with a chassis. It would make a lot more sense. Um, like I said, I prefer a stock. Now this is an HR, or this is an HS Precision stock. Now you can buy, there's a lot of factory rifles, factory precision rifles, that come with HS Precision stocks. There's uh, a lot of Savage rifles, or a couple different brand or types of Savage rifles that you can buy that come factory in an HS Precision stock, as well as some Remington 700s that have an HS Precision stock factory. Um, this actually did not come factory on this rifle. This was actually bought after the fact to build out this rifle this way, but you can buy this exact stock already 
ready to go on some savage rifles. <clears throat> and like I said, there's also this actually I think there are some savage rifles that use basically this same MDT chassis um, for some of their precision rifles. So you can buy factory rifles in both setups and knowing what you plan to use that rifle for um, is going to help you a lot or what you're used to is going to help you a lot in uh, picking the right fit for you, the right type of chassis or stock for you. Um, now as far as if you want to build out a rifle in a chassis or a stock, um, there's a lot of things that need to be talked about. Now, a used to be 15 years ago, 10 or 15 years ago, if you wanted to build out a rifle on a stock, first off, that was one of your your main or if not only options back then was a precision a precision stock, something like a Macmillan. Um, back then, machining wasn't what it is today, and they have not been precision rifle was not as prevalent today so there hadn't been as much uh, innovation in the marketplace so back then if you wanted to build out a precision rifle in a precision stock you were going to have to buy the stock pay your initial investment figure out what type of bottom metal you wanted um, and what action you were going to put in that stock and then you're going to have to take that stock to a gunsmith and have them inlet inlet your stock for your action and your bottom metal Nowadays, the more, the more you look around, there's very few companies who don't have precision, who, who make precision stocks who are not fitting, when you order it, fitting your chassis or your, I'm sorry, fitting your stock for a particular bottom metal and a particular action. Um, most companies nowadays, if you're shooting a factory action, um, come with uh, stocks, precision stocks that are made to fit those particular actions as well as have uh, variation and choices of what types of bottom metals they will come pre-fit to. So I have to add in the cost. Let's say this is a $500 stock brand new. On top of that you have to add on $200 give or take for bottom metal. So even with a $500 stock, you need to account for the amount of money you're going to spend on your bottom metal. So, like I said, say you've got a $500 stock and $200 bottom metal, you're looking at $700. Now, most and and there's not any as far as I as far as I'm aware of any uh, precision stocks that you can buy that you don't have to also after the fact buy bottom metal for. So. That's a cost that you need to be aware of if you want to build out a rifle in a precision stock. Um, like I said, it used to be you had to have your precision stocks fitted for everything. Nowadays, machining, what it is now, what the CNCs and uh, CNCs have came along and allowed uh, stock makers to have their rifle, if you custom order a stock, you can pretty well custom order it ready to go for whatever bottom metal and uh, action you plan to put it put it in as well as uh, a lot of chat or a lot of stocks used to have to be bedded on top of that so you take it to your gunsmith have it have everything inletted and then you would have to bed it to get that tight lock up and tight fit nowadays even like mcmillans who don't use a um, aluminum bedding block or anything in their chat in their stocks um, even Macmillan stocks are machined so well in their fiberglass that you don't need to you don't need to bed your action to your stock in a Macmillan anymore. Uh, and there's a lot of other companies that are along the same vein where you don't need to bed your uh, precision rifle anymore in a stock. Now I still recommend this is this even though came ready to go for the savage stock or for the savage action it is still skim bedded like i said a lot of stocks nowadays will come with what's called an aluminum bedding block if they're not just solid uh if they're not just solid fiberglass they will have what's called an aluminum bedding block in them which is a basically a miniature piece of a piece of aluminum that is fit to your action that will that your 
action will bolt right up to and not require any bedding. Chassis, on the other hand, um, require or don't require bedding from ready to there. There's not as many things to consider when buying a chassis. Um, there are some costs that will come along other than just the chassis, but depending on what the company is, um, like Kadex chassis, um, you buy a Kadex chassis, it comes ready to go. It's got the butt stock as comes as part of your chassis. Um, you get your fore end. The entire thing is a drop your barrel action in and go unit. <clears throat> MDT, on the other hand, looks like what, is what this is. Um, now, Kadex stocks, I, or chassis I should also mention, are extremely expensive um, in comparison to a lot of the other ones, but they are a full unit. MDT chassis, um, most MDT chassis, I think, if not all, um, come as just a chassis. Now, so that means you have to select a grip to go on it, you have to select a buttstock. Now they make a buttstock, like MDT makes their own buttstocks that will attach to any of their chassis, but that's an added cost that you're going to have to figure in if you want to build a rifle out on an MDT chassis. Um, that's why this is a Luth AR stock on this MDT chassis. Um, so basically when you buy an, an MDT chassis, you're getting this from the fore end to where the where the butt stock attaches. Um, so that's something, another cost that you're gonna have to take keep in mind. So this say this is a $500 chassis, well, you've also gotta add on however much you want, you're going to spend on a butt stock, however much you're gonna spend on a grip. And so even though you bought your chassis, it's not, a plug and play ready to go option sometimes you still have to be aware of some of the other money that you may have to spend and like I said there are other companies that uh, come with stocks and chassis ready to go that don't or to come with chassis that are ready to go that uh, are not going to require anything else they're just a plug and play ready to go type drop your barreled action in and go but a lot of them aren't so that is something that if you are shop in the market shopping for a chassis of some sort, you need to be very aware of what that chassis entails and what else you might need to buy to complete your rifle build. Um, there's a lot of cost variations in chassis um, as well as stocks. You can get stocks nowadays from like Boyd stocks, $200 uh, laminate stocks that you can <clears throat> bed bed a good bed, or you can inlet and bed a uh, action into and be ready to go um, and for under four hundred dollars for the entire job ready to go and there are stocks that cost as much as two thousand dollars for the stock without bottom metal. So you need to be aware of all these things when you plan to build a rifle in a stock. Just like in a chassis, when you build a rifle out in a chassis, what other things you're gonna have to buy to add on. There are, there are chassis like the, the new MDT Oryx chassis that come ready to go, full butt stock, full fore end, everything ready to go, drop in your uh, barrel action plug and play for under $400 for right at $400 and there are chassis that cost upwards of $2,500 and still need different things bought for them to finish them out so you can really go into the weeds on how much money you want to spend on one of these on a chassis or a stock and not still be not complete so I just wanted people to be aware of the other expenditures that you might have in both types of setups. Um, so that's pretty much it. I hope that uh, this cleared some stuff up for some people. Um, it, when I, like I said, when I first decided that I was pretty serious into long range shooting, this was some stuff that I didn't understand. And if I wish I would have understood it because I would have made some better choices at the time. Um, so 
maybe this will save some people some money and save them from making the wrong choice in the beginning and you'll have a better idea of how to get started in putting together a precision rifle or buying a ready to go out of the box precision rifle so i'll see you guys next time i'm out